Hello, shooters. My name is James Olin. Welcome back to Trigger Sports TV. This week, we're going to take a trip out to Parma, Idaho. And that's where our field correspondent, Molly Smith, is. Along with other juniors, she will be receiving instructions from top shooters such as Randy Rogers and B.J. Norris. There will be information in this show, shooters, for every shooter out there, so don't go away. Hey everyone, I'm Molly Smith, and today we're in Parma, Idaho for the MGM Junior Camp. So this is a great opportunity for all these juniors to get out there and learn some intermediate skills with their shooting. That can be moving targets, that can be shooting on the move, shooting around barricades, all that crazy stuff. So let's go check it out. It's going to be fun. Today, I really want to have everybody work on the basics. Um, so it's not going to be quite as much fun as Maverick Cat with the rifles, but I think probably, hopefully, you'll learn a lot that you can take home and continue to practice and improve your shooting. While you're here, I ask that you try everything I'm teaching you because it works for me. It may not work for you, but I want you to try it. A couple of things I want, hope you noticed while I was shooting. My finger came right off the trigger as soon as I finished shooting. I didn't pin it and hold it and then let go. As soon as I fired the shot, my finger came off. I want you guys to concentrate on that because it's really important that you don't pin that trigger because it will make your follow-up shots a lot slower. A couple other things I want you to watch for here. Your sight should be crystal clear. Your eye can only focus on one thing at a time. If the sights are clear, then the dot is fuzzy. You'll be watching your sights the whole time. I want you to line up your sights. Watch your sights as you squeeze, 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 squeeze. Okay, it goes off. I watch my sights rise and then come back down and watch my sights again. You should be watching your sights the whole time. It's really hard, but what you've got to do is as you're squeezing, you're watching your sight picture. And all of a sudden it'll settle and you'll want to squeeze and continue and make the shot break. However, what'll happen is sometimes you'll start going like this because you're getting tired and you're getting wobbly. If you try to break the shot then, it's going to go everywhere. What you need to do is you need to let off, take a breath. Sometimes you need to bring the gun down, especially if your arms are getting tired. Come back up and start over. Having the strength and the patience to let off when you don't see a good sight picture is extremely hard, but it's a really good skill to learn. With your sight picture, do you aim right at, do you cover the target? I don't, I don't like to cover the target. Um, when I have my sight picture, I like the sights to, I like my point of impact to be at the top of the front sight okay. with the front top sight the front centered side. in the rear sights. I don't like to cover the target because if you're shooting something like this with a very small target, if you try to cover it with your sights, you don't know where exactly you're covering it on. So I prefer to have the point of aim right at the top of the front sight. The next thing I want to talk about is drawing the gun. Um, I think drawing the gun is the hardest thing to do. I work on it all the time. I've been shooting 15 years and I haven't perfected it yet. Someday I hope to, but I'm still working on it. So I think it's important to always draw the gun and practice drawing the gun. For me, I think of drawing the gun as three separate parts. Uh, I think of it as gripping the gun, getting the gun out of the holster, and extending the gun to shoot. I try to break it down in those three parts because it's easier for me to work on different parts than to try to work on the whole thing at once. First thing, when you grip the gun, I like to do what's called the scoop method. And what that means is that I bring it with my lower fingers and I scoop the gun up out of the holster. And as I scoop with my fingers, I bring my thumb up over the top and I grip it like that. Does that make sense? I don't like to come up and come down and grip and then move. And the reason I don't like to do that is I feel that if you come up and grip and then move, you're stopping. Every time you stop, I think it's a quarter of a second. When I was doing cowboy, one of the things that we tried to do is we tried to eliminate pauses. Um, I still try to do that. And shooting still challenge, I don't feel like I can have this quarter second pause. You know, that's quarter second that I'm pausing and I don't have that much time to lose. So I like to do the scoop and I like to try to scoop it as I'm moving. Now, as I grip the gun, my support hand, I actually want to come right up here on my chest. And the reason I like to come up really high on this side of my chest is because when I bring the gun out, I want to bring it out way up here. And the reason I want it way up here is because I can see my sight right now. And as I extend my arms, I'm lining up my sight picture so that my arms extend. As soon as they reach full extension, my sight picture is already in place. It's already in line. I can just pull the trigger. 
One of the other things that I do is as soon as the gun comes right here, my finger's on the trigger. It's pointed downrange, I'm ready to shoot. So as my finger's on my trigger and as I extend, I'm actually pulling the trigger and taking up the slack and the reset so that when I extend, the trigger has to move this far instead of this far. I'm gonna do it with you, okay? Okay. I'm gonna come up, come right here, push out. Feel the difference? Yeah. Okay. If you're trying to come out, way out here to meet your other hand, I want you to meet your other hand right here. Would it have any difference with having one that you don't need to pull all the way out of having an open? Because mm -mm, it still works the same, you still have to pull up. Okay. Regardless so. of whether or not how far you have to pull up, it's still the same motion. Okay. Eight. That's better. Almost. That's right, take your time, go slow. Slow. Much better. And right, now I'm gonna tell you when to start pulling. Pull, 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 pull. There. That was so much better. Pull, 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 pull. Very good. Pull, 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 pull. Very good. You feel the difference? Yeah. And you're, to you're totally safe because you're pointed straight down range. In fact, you might even hit the target if it goes off soon. I have. Yes, I love it when that happens. I know. It's so cool. We'll be right back. Welcome back to the MGM Junior Camp. So I totally changed my stance. I stand completely sideways to the target when I'm shooting one-handed. The reason I do this is because I want to have my full body weight behind my arm to help me control that recoil. If I have my whole weight, my whole body behind my arm, it's easier for me to control it. Shooting one-handed, I lock my arm. And the reason I do that is because it increases, it tightens all my muscles and increases the strength I have in that hand. If I try to break my arm one-handed, my gun will go wild like this with the recoil. So I lock my arm one-handed. I don't like canting because it changes the sight picture. And suddenly if I cant it and I miss high, am I missing a high or am I missing a left? You know, how do I adjust the sight picture? If you keep it straight up and down, you're looking at the same sight picture all the time. Actually, this sort of course fire where it's all getting down to the basics is basically the key to every other part of this camp where you have to first learn all of these different basics and put them together in order to do anything else even better. So this is definitely one of the most usable classes in everyday um, competition shooting. Excellent, excellent. Keep that gun moving. Don't stop to grab it. Keep your hand moving. Right here. Good. Okay, you can snatch the first part, but keep the second part slow. Snatch slow. Okay, when you're bringing the gun up, you're kind of bringing it up at an angle like this, so it's kind of swooping down in, so it's settling at the bottom. When you bring it up, try to bring it up level, so that when you push it out, it pushes straight out towards the target. Tight, squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. Good, very good. Slow, prep, 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 prep. Good, much better. I want you to get your finger on the trigger faster so it doesn't okay. take you as long. Prep, 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 prep. There. Did that hit? Yes, it did. Prep, 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 prep. Excellent. Prep, 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 prep. Very good. A lot of times when people start going faster or start doing, you know, speed drills or movement drills or something, they forget basics like squeezing the trigger. So as you're doing this draw, I don't want you to forget about that squeezing the trigger. I know there's a lot to think about. I'm asking you to be smooth. I'm asking you to move in a different way. But don't forget about your sights and don't forget about the trigger. I'm really impressed. You guys have by far been the most accurate group so far. So yay! Now I'm with Randy Rogers and she's definitely one of the top women shooters out there. And she's actually kind enough to come out here and be teaching all these kids. So what drove you to do this insanity? Well, 
the thing that made me really want to come out here is I was actually a junior shooter. I started shooting at 11 years old and it made such a huge impact on my life. Um, it taught me responsibility and the importance of setting goals and the importance of hard work and I wouldn't be the person I am today if I hadn't started shooting when I was a junior. And so juniors have a soft spot in my heart and it just it means a lot for me to be able to come out here and pass on the skills that I learned to the next generation. Tell me about how much of a role these basic parts that you're training us play in different sort of competitions just overall honestly I think practicing the basics will get you to the top in anything um, I've been very lucky um, I've actually competed in seven different shooting sports throughout my shooting competition years and one of the things that I think I've been able to do is I've been very successful in all of them because the basics apply everywhere everywhere you need to line up the sights and have a good smooth trigger pull that's nice and smooth and keeps you on target as long as you're lining up the sights and pulling the trigger whatever you shoot whether it be pistol or rifles or shotgun or steel or paper or clay targets, you're going to be able to hit them if you stick to those basics. Tell me about some of the things that you've, your most recent accomplishments. Well, I've been very successful this year. I've been very lucky. Um, in the past year, I actually won the ladies' standard title at the Ipswich World Shoot in October. Um, I won the ladies, thank you. I won the ladies' iron sight at the I, Steel Challenge Nationals. And I also won the ladies' title at the Cowboy Action World Shoot in June. So. And where do you hope to go with all this? You know, I hope the sky's the limit. Uh, someday I'd like to continue winning the ladies' titles in every shooting sport there is. And someday I'd like to beat the men as well. Biggest thing you have to do is keep your knees bent the whole time, okay? You should never, ever, 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 ever lock your knee out when you're shooting on the move. Ever, ever. You want to keep your knees bent the whole time. So when I'm walking, okay, I won't do everything. But you see, my knees never, never lock out. Oh, if you think that's funny, you hadn't seen anything yet. All right, the second most important thing that you do is how your foot strikes the ground. You have to strike the ground right on your heel, all right? And then you roll your foot forward and do the same thing again. So that looks like this right here okay you can do that at a bunch of different speeds that's why I was talking I want you all to focus on the execution you can go really slow okay and still do the right technique <clears throat> you don't want your knees to lock out because as soon as your knee locks out all that momentum has to go somewhere it goes into the rest of your body and starts moving the gun around so you don't want that to happen when you strike the ground, you just want to kind of collapse in your knee so you can absorb the shock and keep the gun steadier. So when you set up in the box, you want to set up with whatever direction of the movement that you're in, that's the foot you want to lead with. Okay? So if we're moving this way, that's your right foot. If we're moving this way, it's your left foot. When you step off, okay, you want to step off with your lead foot reason for that is it helps your draw when you move okay if you're right here and I bring this leg around all right where did my gun go Behind you. my gun had a huge movement and I'm gonna try have to try and find it to get it out of the holster versus if I start right here all right and I just pick my foot up and take a small step then the gun moves very little okay so it helps your draw get it going the first thing you need to do when the buzzer goes off is draw your gun Right now, B.J. Norris is trying to teach us how to shoot on the move, except he's not allowing real fire right now. He's just doing dry firing, and he's just focusing on letting us learn uh, heel-toe motion so that we can smoothly go from point A to point B while engaging targets on the way there. You got to keep a smooth gait. Heel-toe, heel-toe. Good job. Heel toe, heel toe, don't walk on your toes. Walk on your heels. Very good. Who thinks I'm absolutely insane? We knew that. Well, we're all insane. <laughs> we'll be right back with more action from the MGM Junior Camp. We're back 
at the MGM Junior Camp. We're going to start going the lateral movement. The rule, is, the rule for the drill is that your one foot, at least one foot, must touch the ground inside the box before you change direction. I want you to pay attention to my footwork, all right? So I'm going to start here. I'm going to start low ready. And we're going to see how bad I can mess this up. All right, what did I do the entire time? I didn't stop moving, I kept a steady pace the whole time. I stayed in the same position. When I started moving sideways, all right, <clears throat> as much as possible, I am keeping my hips turned in the direction of movement, okay? So that means I'm working here, I'm working it, I'm, cro I'm crossing over a little bit, but when I get to right here, Guess what? I can't really bend anymore, okay? I'm really tied up and I either have to stop or break my stance to be able to shoot. So when I get right here, okay, I can't bend anymore without breaking my stance. So I flip around and start going backwards to be able to get to the last target. Go ahead and say hot. All right, if I start screaming switch or swap or something to that effect to you, that means you need to swap over and start going backwards, okay? By the time, I mean, because everybody's a little bit different in the way their hips move and everything and their flexibility, yeah, I can't dance. Um, I can't give you a point in space where you have to you know you have to switch over okay everybody's a little bit different but i recognize that when i see you get tied up i can yell at you Now I'm here with BJ Norris, reigning steel challenge champion, and he's one of the instructors at the camp as well. What are you teaching today and for the weekend? Well, I've been teaching uh, shooting on the move the whole time. It's an advanced skill, uh, more so than some of the others. It's a lot of fun. Everybody's having a lot of fun. I think uh, you know they're really learning and learning the proper technique for it, and that way they'll be able to go home and practice it and really, you know, perfect it. What sort of games or competitions would this skill help the most in when it comes to competitive shooting? When it comes to competitive shooting, you're mostly going to see this skill in USPSA or IPSC. Um, there is some application in uh, IDPA to it, 
but it's really anything like three gun, anything where you're just dynamic and you're actually moving around a whole bunch. Well, most people would associate you with Steel Challenge. So what sort of other accomplishments do you have outside of that that make you so good at this sort of task, like moving and shooting? Well, I've been on the uh, USPSA World Shoot Team, uh, the Men's Open Team in 2008, uh, and we won the gold medal. Actually, that year, the, US, the USPSA, any team from USPSA won the gold medal. Wow. Yeah. We had a big table full of stuff. It was pretty <laughs> awesome. Um, but I've been... Uh, you know, a top 16 has been a shirt USPSA national for almost 10 years now, and uh, junior national champion in production once and then open three times. So, Tell me a little bit about what you feel about having a camp like this and all the different instructors. Well, I mean, this is really a great experience for y'all. Um, when I went through a junior camp, it was from Jerry and Kay Michoac, uh back when they had their <laughs> junior camp shootout. Um, so that was my experience, and then after I was a camper, they actually brought me back to help instruct. Um, so that was a really cool experience for me, and when Rhonda approached me a couple years ago about trying to help out here, um, I was really excited to be able to, to get back in this sort of, you know, environment to yeah. really help, you know, the competitive shooter uh, junior program, um, because I say it's, it's a great experience. We'll be right back. The MGM Junior Camp is a camp for intermediate juniors, meaning that we know basic gun safety and we know how to shoot decently at least. So this is more for toning all your different skills, having all these pro instructors helping us with more than just the basics. There is that basic reinforcement, but learning different kinds of skills. So stay on the lookout for more from the MGM Junior Camp. Shooters, thanks for tuning in to this week's show. We've had a good time. I've learned some things. I hope you have too. We want to thank Molly and we'll see you again next week.